Okay, quick question. Everyone knows about saber-toothed cats, right? Those crazy prehistoric predators with fangs so huge they could make Dracula jealous. But have you ever stopped and thought, why didn't dogs ever get teeth like that? Here's something jaw-dropping. Saber teeth evolved multiple times in different animals throughout history. Nature loved this design whenever the conditions were right. We tend to think of the famous saber-toothed cats, but they weren't alone. Long before Smilodon, back in the age of dinosaurs, some ancient proto-mammal predators had long fangs too. Think of creatures like Gorgonopsids, which prowled before even the dinosaurs died out. Fast forward, and even in the mammal era there were imposter saber-tooths. Animals that looked like saber-toothed cats but weren't true cats at all. One of the craziest examples is Thylacosmilus. This terror prowled South America and had huge saber-teeth just like Smilodon. But get this, it was a marsupial. In other words, it was more closely related to kangaroos and opossums than to cats. There were also false saber-toothed cats in the cat family tree, relatives of cats that independently evolved saber fangs on their own. It was clearly a winning strategy in certain times and places, giving predators a real edge and taking down prey. To answer the saber-toothed dog mystery, we need to understand that cats and dogs evolved as predators in very different ways. Think about how a lion hunts versus how a wolf hunts. They're both top carnivores, but their styles are almost night and day. Most big cats are stalk and ambush hunters. They are stealthy, get as close as possible without being noticed, then explode in a short burst of speed. For example, a mountain lion will creep up and then leap onto a deer, gripping it with those muscular forearms and taking a targeted bite to the neck. Often it severs the spinal cord or suffocates the prey by clamping the windpipe. One hit, one kill. Now the extinct saber-toothed cats took that to an extreme. They were the ultimate ambushers. Super strong arms to hold struggling megafauna, and oversized canines to deliver a killing blow in a vulnerable spot. In essence, saber-teeth were perfectly suited for the cat approach to hunting, burst out of hiding, wrestle and dispatch the prey fast before it can fight back and injure the predator. Those saber fangs evolved as a solution for bringing down very large prey, like mammoths, mastodons, giant bison, when a quick kill was needed. If you're a solitary cat trying to take down a two-ton woolly mammoth baby while not trying to get stomped by mama mammoth, you really want the fight to end quick in your favor. Now contrast this with wild dogs or wolves. Dogs, and by dogs here we include wolves, wild dogs, etc., tend to be pursuit predators. Instead of relying on a surprise pounce, many wild canines run their prey to exhaustion. Wolves, for instance, often chase a deer or elk for miles, harrying it, nipping at its legs, wearing it down. They usually hunt in packs, working as a team to corner and wear out a much larger animal. When the prey finally tires, the wolves move in for the kill. And how do they kill? Often by multiple bites, tearing into the victim from several angles. A pack of wolves might bite the hindquarters, flanks, and snout of a moose repeatedly, causing massive blood loss and shock. It's not surgical at all. It's more like being ripped apart by a swarming swarm of smaller attackers. Eventually, the prey collapses, and the wolves can safely finish it, sometimes with a throat bite but only once the prey is weakened. Even a lone canid like a fox or coyote uses a bite grip and shake method on smaller prey, which is a very different motion and strategy than a cat's precise throat bite. In short, dogs go for a marathon, cats go for a sprint. Dogs bite many times, cats want to bite once in the right spot. Neither strategy is better universally. Each works for the kind of prey and environment those animals evolved in but it sets the stage for why having two giant teeth might be useful for one style and not so much for the other. So given those two hunting styles, let's break down why evolution never turned a dog into a saber-tooth killer. There are a few big reasons, from anatomy to behavior. Saber-toothed cats could open their jaws way wider than a normal predator. We're talking an almost 90-degree gape in Smilodon. That's incredibly wide. Modern big cats like lions can open pretty wide too, maybe around 65 degrees or more. 
which is necessary to get their teeth around a big throat. Dogs, on the other hand, have longer snouts and a different jaw hinge structure, which limits how wide they can open. If you look at a wolf skull, the snout is elongated. When they open up, the angle isn't as extreme as a cat's. A saber-toothed dog would need to re-engineer its whole jaw to have a wide gape for using long fangs. Cats could do it because their faces are shorter and their jaw muscles evolved to allow that big swing. Dogs historically just never went that route. Their snout stayed long for scent tracking, and their jaws optimized for a strong bite and bite endurance, not a single big chomp. As cool as saber teeth were, they were relatively delicate when it came to rough use. They could crack or break if they hit the bone wrong. Saber tooth predators had to be careful. They would often target soft parts of the prey, like the neck, belly, or inside the throat to avoid hitting heavy bone. This is fine if you're an ambush predator. You have the prey in a vice grip and you take a measured stab. But dogs and wolves are not so gentle in their killing style. A pack of wolves savaging a bison is a chaotic scene. Biting, tugging, jerking. If one had extra long fangs, imagine how easily those teeth could snap while the wolf is hanging onto a bucking kicking prey or biting near bones. In fact, wolves and other canids often crunch bones when feeding. They have to, to get at marrow, or to consume as much as possible. Saber teeth would be a liability for that. They might break off when gnawing a carcass. Evolutionarily, there's no point in having a flashy weapon if it's going to break the first time you use it wrong. For saber tooths, it only made sense because their entire anatomy and strategy minimized the risk of tooth breakage. A saber-toothed dog using typical canid behavior would probably snap its sabers and starve. Beyond the jaw game, consider other anatomy. Saber-toothed cats had very muscular necks and shoulders to drive those fangs in and hold struggling prey. Cats are also equipped with retractable claws and flexible paws to smack and hold prey. Ever watched your house cat tackle a toy? Scaled up, that's what a leopard does to a gazelle. Dogs lack some of that gripping power in their forelimbs. They don't use their forepaws to wrestle large prey the same way. They mostly use their jaws. For a dog to go saber tooth, it would likely need to become more cat-like in build. Thick shoulders, strong arms, maybe even more claw development to assist in holding prey. At that point, it's practically not a dog anymore. It seems that sabers comes as part of a whole package of traits that felines and similar predators had, but canines did not. Evolution can't just slap huge canines on a wolf without overhauling the whole wolf's hunting apparatus. And that overhaul never happened, because it wasn't necessary. So, why no saber-toothed dogs? It comes down to different problems needing different solutions. Saber-toothed cats and their analogs evolved those mega fangs because it gave them a survival edge in a specific context. Typically, ambushing large prey in relatively closed environments, dogs and their kin found success through other means like pack hunting, endurance chasing, and being generalists. They simply never needed sabers. And in fact, adding sabers would have likely made them worse at what they're good at. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.